Ah, there you are. Uh, part three, choosing a flash. So here we are, and they've put up with two long lessons, and we're going to have this one, which will eventually come to which flash I think you should go for. Now, excuse the continuity, my shirt changes, and so does the background during this film, but there are things we all have to live with. And that's not really a serious one. Now, we're going to go through here in this one the, all the special features of flashes, and then we'll do a little cross list and see which really ones you need and how much money you've got to spend. Let's get on with that. We're going to start now with flash zooming. Now, I'll switch the flash on in this corner you'll see a number with millimetres. Now, if I half press the shutter and I turn the zoom on the camera, you can see that figure moving. And that is the zoom on the flash changing automatically. On other makes, that won't change automatically, or not on all makes. Hence, here we come back to the expensive flashes. If your lenses or flash won't allow the automatic zoom, you can always just press the button on the flash. If you've got a 50 millimeter, take it up to 50 millimeter. So that works up to about 110 millimeter, something like that. Okay, got that. Right, now there are three other things, at least three things that we have to think about when choosing a flash. It's the power of a flash. How do we know how powerful a flash is? It's the price of a flash. Well, it's easy to know what that is. But there's another thing that's important that might sway your choice a little is the recharging cycle. How fast does a flash recharge? And that rather depends on the type of subject. Um, well, I suppose we start with that, shall we? I've switched it on. We're in 128th of the power. Now, if I start firing, you can see how fast that it recharges very fast, so I can shoot extremely fast. But if I now increase the power, and I do that just by turning this knob on this one, and I increase the power to full power, you will see, see how long it's gonna take for that light to come on. So that is my recharging cycle at full power. Now, of course, what that means is that you're going to have to get a very powerful flash because you've got to use it on very low power. Then the flash is come out like crazy. But if you've got a very, not very powerful flash and you have to use it on full, now that's with good batteries. Imagine if the batteries are going down and down and down, which they do do pretty quickly. So much to do, so much to learn. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so much going on. Right, the power of flash. How do we know how powerful a flash is? Well, you'll see in the specifications, it'll have something that will say GN. GN is the guide number, and its norm for this flash is 60. This is quite a powerful flash. They do go up to 250, 300, but this is a normal, powerful flash for professional use, it's great. Allows me to turn the power right down, as you saw. Now, how do we know that 60 is good and powerful? Well, 60, the way we used to do it, was the guide number divided by the distance of the flash to the subject would give us our f-stop if we were using 100 ISO. Now, of course, we don't have to calculate all that these days. The flash does it for us. Now, there's another complication, of course, because that's old. That's in the old days. I've got to zoom on this flash so I can zoom it in and out and concentrate the flash. So I promise you, 60 is easily powerful for most uses. You can go down to 10 if you're in a small room and just want to take pictures of people in a room. 30 guide number is a very, 30 to 35 is a very usable, nice flash, and that's what I would recommend to start. Something that you can use afterwards when it's linked to another flash in some way or other. So between 30 and 40, ideal to start with. 
If you can, you get one of these. Much more expensive. <clears throat> now for the delicate bit. Um, I'm going to give you my idea on what is a good flash. Now, please, please, please don't blame me if you buy it and it uh, breaks down after a week or something. I, this is only, it's what I would buy in your situation. So, it's very easy for the Nikon, oh, very easy for the Canon, and here it is. Well, here it is, the Yongnuo, uh, I think that's how it's pronounced, Yongnuo. Um, it's the 565 EX ETTL. It's got a guide number of 58, so it's very powerful. It will later um, be ideal for a second flash, if you want to work with multiple flashes. It's ideal as it's on its own, and it's only... Well, have a look at the price on Amazon. Now for the Nikon, I've had much more problem finding one that's suitable. So I've taken the easy way out, I'm afraid. Um, maybe some Nikon owners will make comments underneath, but uh, I've looked and I'm afraid I can't find anything better than, than this. Well, at the last minute I've changed my mind. I found this. I think it's great. It's the Yungnu 568EX2 um, and it's got a guide number of 58 and it looks a very good deal as well. Um, rather than that, it would have been one of the Nikon speedlights but um, considering this is a third of the price, if not a quarter of the price, as is the other one, um, I think this is the thing to do is to start with these and then use them as second flashes, as I said, later on when you've got the four or five hundred pounds to uh, <clears throat> throw away, spend on, um, on the, uh, the set makes, the Nikon and the Canon makes. Now, as I said in one of the other lessons, I've got one of these, not this particular one, but I've got a Unigu, and it's been fantastic for me. Um, but I take no responsibility, it is made in China, Mine is great. I just hope yours will be if you buy it. Well, I hope that was help. That's the first three lessons of uh, Flash for Beginners. In the next lesson, we'll go on to talking about, or not talking about, we'll do some practical work with a model. And I'll show you how I will, would use Flash as a fill-in, as a little clip light from the back with daylight and a little bit in the studio or what you could do in your lounge. So, see you soon for lesson four.